You're listening to the Light Novel Podcast. Visit us online at lightnovelpodcast.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the fourth episode of the Light Novel Podcast. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different tonight. Uh, it's in honor of the fact that Anime Expo is going to be happening this upcoming weekend. Well, I guess if you're listening to this at the time it goes live, it's this upcoming weekend. Uh, we thought with the fact that with Anime Expo, a lot of brand new series are announced and licensed, it might be kind of fun for each of us to pick a title that we a want to see licensed and then maybe pick up a second title if, you know, it's different than the first one that we think is likely to get licensed. We thought it might be a little fun to sort of peer into a crystal ball and take a look at the possible future that awaits us this weekend. Um, and then we'll be doing a special episode next week because we usually do every other week, but uh, we'll be back next week to actually take a look at what actually got licensed and see if any of us got it right. So uh, first off though, we will start off with just a little bit of news. Uh, not a lot of stuff to go over. Um, I'll go over the really like non-discussion type stuff first. Uh, first of all, J Novel Club has now announced that all of their titles are available on Google Play. So if you're an Android fan and want to pick them up that way, then uh, I guess you can now. Uh, Soul Press uh, has just announced, like uh, just as I was about to hit record on this, I saw it come up, uh, that they have finished printing the physical copies of Battle Divas 1 and Strongest Gamer number one, and they are going to be shipping them out to Amazon. So if you have ordered those physical copies or have been looking forward to them, uh, they are coming very soon. And uh, I'll be honest, I've talked to the guys at Soul Press. They apparently are really proud of these physical copies. They apparently have gone out of their way to try and uh, get really good, like high quality stock and everything else to print these things on. So I'm kind of, uh, kind of excited to see just how they look and how they sort of stack up against the, the more mass market produced stuff from like, say, Yen On. Well, it'll be interesting to see. I have a Finally, quick question. Yeah. Um, are the pages made out of gold? No, no. Because if they were, I know. Well, you know. Well, who's the cheapskate? Them for not doing it, or for us for not being willing to pay eight hundred dollars for a single volume of a light novel? I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'm still going to pirate it anyway. <laughs> In any case, uh, finally, the last bit of news, and this is a follow up to what we were discussing two weeks ago. And actually, I I had to laugh because we recorded last week's podcast, and at that point, it was a starting controversy and then when i woke up the next morning i was like oh look at that the anime got canceled and then the next day oh look at that the light novel's not getting published anymore and that is in regards to the new life plus young again in another world uh like i said we discussed this two weeks ago about how there was a rising controversy that the anime uh had started with a number of chinese fans stating that it was very anti-China that the there was concerns because the author had tweeted some uh, very questionable material about people in China and in South Korea. And like I said, within about two or three days of that being a rising controversy, the anime has been cancelled. And at this point, the Japanese publisher has ceased publication of the book. I don't know if it's... Had they actually, did now maybe you guys know, because just off the top of my head, I can't remember. I think they've put it on hiatus. They haven't officially come out and said it's dead, have they? The What I heard was halted. That was okay. the word that was used on Anime News Network. Yeah. Right. I, I remember like a specifically. a very vague word. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I that's think it. they're basically halting it until like the heat dies down. Yeah. Well, mm. I think I think it could be, you know, in Japan, a lot of times they don't just outright cancel a series. Like, Especially if even, it's got 20 volumes that's yeah, actually making money. A lot of times they'll keep it ongoing, but they won't actually say they're canceling it. Right, so it could right. be it could be halted indefinitely. I hope right. not. I certainly yeah. hope not, but it could be. Yeah. I, I think what they're actually doing is they're just gonna like hold it for a couple of months to basically appease the Chinese, and then once that's like once the heat dies down, they're just gonna like slowly release it under the table. Yeah, some some other stuff to add. Uh the author he said that he was going to um, maybe take down the Seo Seitu, 
uh, the, the, you know, Naro U, that's the, um, the web novel version. He right. said he was going to take that down and maybe do some edits. Um, so if he, if he fails like doing that, then maybe then it, once he's updated that, maybe they'll start publishing. Right. It yeah. Again. Because I heard apparently the, the web, the web version apparently had some far more inflammatory statements in it than what they were publishing. Is that, I, did you I, guys read yeah. that somewhere too? I, I, yeah, heard I feel that. like I heard that. But I, I know I know like the major things were just basically the numbers. I don't know if you saw that. It was like uh the death counts. It was like three thousand, which is something ridiculous. It was like yeah. three thousand seven hundred and twelve, so it was like nineteen thirty seven December. And then another one was um nine twelve was his pre war count, which is December ninth was when they invaded. So you know, I don't know. And then the other thing was, like, they said he was 94 years old. And some people are trying to say that means, oh, he might be this, this I think, General Asaka who, like, ordered the Nanking Massacre. Oh, jeez. Okay. I don't know. Ooh, yeah. that, okay, well, I can see where if that... Holy shit, now, that's going to yeah. happen. So, yeah. so he, he lived to 94. He was never charged with a war crime. And oh. uh, he served in business roles and government roles right up until his death. So, yeah. Okay. I well, I guess if they're making that connection now, again, who knows if that's legitimate or if that's, mm -hmm. but you know what though, that seems a little too specific for the author. Like maybe it's not like he did that. You know what I mean? Like maybe it was like a quite kind of under the table shout out. You know what I mean? Like, you know, mm -hmm. some t authors will do that. Like they don't mean for the character to be specifically someone, but they're kind of like, oh, well, I'll make his birth date the same as that guy. Or, you know what I mean? Like, just so that if you see the parallels, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's um, it's it's historical symbolism. And I just linked a yeah. thing about soldiers of the highest kill count. So, like, apparently I just linked a thing and I'm just trying to find more history on soldiers of the highest kill count. Because let, let's see, let's see, actually see if it's possible. <laughs> to have 3,000 kills. Kills in a war. Well, I, I think the other thing was is that they were saying that the whole idea too was that all of his kills were with a katana, mm -hmm. which meant that like he was not just, it wasn't like, Oh, you have 3000 kills cause you ordered a bombing or, you know, you were, you manned like a bomber or something like that. Like they're saying like, basically this guy was a butcher that basically killed people up close and personal. Yeah. So, I mean, you combine, like you said, like you combine a, the, the, the battle that he would have taken place in the war that he would have taken place in, which, is you know like we said just scratching the surface there's a lot of atrocities that were committed by the japanese side you know we can argue history right or wrong up and down but i mean there's no denying that there's definitely a lot of bad blood about that and justifiably so and then if you combine that with the fact that then the author goes off on a anti-chinese anti-korean rant on twitter a couple years back you combine all those things. Like I understand the controversy and I, I think, well, we were talking beforehand that, you know, I don't think any of us were really shocked that the anime got canceled because in particular, like I was saying earlier, a lot of, there's a lot of Chinese money getting invested in anime now. And we see like, there's even like joint productions and stuff like that. So I wasn't too shocked, but I was surprised that the light novel was halted in Japan. I think that's kind of like a bit of a, like, I think there was a bit of an overreaction. Like, yeah, he said some racist shit a couple of years ago, but doesn't mean he has those fucking sentiments today. You know, it's like, you know, when you say stupid shit as a child, you know, you, oh, I said some stupid shit. I'm, I, I apologize. You know, I was a bit foolish or maybe I had a bad day. You know, these things happen. Like, I think pulling the, I think pulling the light novel, like, was a little... Like, I think a little, like, knee-jerky, but, you know, I think I understand with the anime. Like, it's okay. Like, you'll get anime later, just not now. Well, I think that, I mean, you know what, but looking at it in light, what we were saying, like, you know, there's a big difference between halting and coming right out and saying cancelled. Or, or, you know, saying more specifically, we will no longer publish. So I th kind of think you guys might be on the right track, that it's like, we're just going to lay low for a while, let the heat died down for a bit and then uh you know we might resurrect it down the road when not as many people are watching 
And then we'll just not worry about ever trying to get an anime made because that's what brought the heat. Because we were saying, like, this book has published 18 volumes in Japan. Like, this isn't some book that just came out a year ago that, you know, people are discovering because of the anime, right? So, I, uh, you know what? And and then I guess, I don't know if I said that, but uh, J Novel Club has made an official statement stating that uh, they've already, I guess, lined up the release of volume number three. Uh, so that one is obviously going to be coming out. But then they have said that after that, there won't be any more until they confer with the Japanese publisher and stuff like that. All right, so let's actually get into the, the reason that we are all here tonight. Uh, and just for the listeners, uh, all of the current participants of the Light Novel Podcast will hopefully be able to do this. Uh, I know Flies is kind of moving across country right now, so I don't know if he'll be able to join in tomorrow night. And Philip, who was here in volume number one, of course, got himself some sweet job promotion. So he's not able to be hanging around with us for a while either. So if you've been listening from the very start. <laughs> yes, Amazing just Amazing <laughs> grace, the uh, sweetest sound. Whatever, man. He's, he's not here because he's making bank. Like, seriously, I don't feel like too heartbroken for the guy. <laughs> yeah, good for him. Yeah, I mean, well, know, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know what? This was a great opportunity for him. And, you know, like we said at the time, we're like, buddy, like, take the opportunity. Have no. Yeah, he's have... welcome back anytime. Oh, we'll yeah, of course. Back the fold of open of, arms. Of course. So, in any case, if you've been listening to the first, from since the very first volume, that's why Philip isn't with us. We didn't kick him out. We're not mean people that way. So, so in any case, right now, I've got Bio Gundam, I've got Tom, and I've got Terrence with me. They're going to go over their titles, and then we will be recording with the rest of the crew tomorrow night by my time. It will be, you know, a matter of seconds in between for you, the listeners. So, the magic of editing. So, in any case, let us begin. We will talk about our uh, desires and predictions so uh, I guess we'll just go in order down the line. So Bio Gundam, go ahead. Tell us, what do you think? Um, my licensed wish is High School DxD, and my licensed guest is the Testament of Sister New Devil. Now, the reason why I want High School DxD to be licensed is because, you know, their licensing series, you know, like How Not to Summon a Demon Lord or A Little Sister is All You Need. And, you know, I think, you know, High School DxD will probably, you know, I think High School DxD would do very well in a market that is um, allowing more sexual-based light novel content. And also, like, I really enjoy High School DxD. Like, I love the anime. I've read some of the manga. And I used to read the um, light novel translations on Bakasuki, which is a, a really good website. I'd recommend it. But um, um, because um, I think what's, I think one of the, Basically, one of the cool things about High School DxD and one of the things I sort of got on it, it, like what I really enjoy about it, is it's basically, it's a world where every single supernatural god, deity, and being, they are actually a thing. It's like a weird, like, multi-cultural, multi-whatever world. And even if you're a human or an angel or whatever, you know, you can still be a, you know, you can still be powerful. Like you can, you can be a person. It's like um, a certain magical index. You know, there's all these different players and factions, and it's just like, it's amazing. Like you can, it, like high school DxD, like the world it takes place in. Like it's almost like you can play like a role playing game on it. Like you know, high school DxD by night. You know, you just play as a bunch of random people fucking around in this world that's so colorful and rich and. I mean, it doesn't do everything with what it has. Like, maybe it could go a bit more in depth with some of the characters and stuff, but I think it's a really enjoyable series. All right. And now I'm going to interject for one second, though. So why do you think it won't get licensed? Um, why I think it won't get licensed? Um, hmm. Because you, you didn't maybe... choose it as your one to get licensed because you thought Sister New Devil would, right? Oh yeah, that's right. Um, for reasons why I think it won't get licensed is that you know it tackles a. It basically, um, I think one of the reasons why it won't get licensed is because it does take the piss out of a lot of religions. I mean, it it takes the piss out of Christianity. It takes the piss of almost every single religion ever, and I guess some people might get sensitive about that. And um, it also tackles some issues that aren't exactly for the faint of heart. I mean, one of the characters, for example, he was involved in experimentations where he was, like, tortured and tied up, and a lot of his friends were executed. 
and it also talks about sort of like racism at some points as well. So um, it tackles a, a f like even though it's very happy go lucky, uh, opai titties and stuff like that, it does tackle some subject matter that is a little bit on a little extreme. Right. Okay. I think that is a perfect description of high school DXD. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'd agree. I've I've only seen the anime, but yeah. <laughs> Like some of the stuff that kind of happens in it, it's just like wow. Like in it, one of the vol, like um, it does like tackle some serious subjects at times. Like it doesn't go too in depth, but more like saying it's just like you know this world isn't all fun and fun and games. You know, there's some some serious stuff that does actually happen. All right, so now, Testament of Sister New Devil. So what's it about? Why do you think it has a better shot of getting licensed over DD? Um. I think it has a better, like, chance of being licensed because it's just more, like, I wouldn't say it's, it's less serious, but I would say it's, like, it's shorter. It's basically, like, it's basically, like, um, how not to summon a demon lord. You know, you've got a main character who's, like, a chad, and he gets surrounded by a bunch of demon girls and stuff. They have adventures, and he's kind of, like, this badass. And it's, like, the typical shonen story, and... It only gets extreme in, like, the sexual content in, like, later volumes, but I think, like, it has more of a chance in earlier volumes because it's not really making fun of religion or mm. taking the piss out of it. It's just saying, like, yeah, demons, angels, vampires, they exist, but, you know. Pfft. So you think it's less controversial except for maybe the sexual bits later on? Yeah. Like, like High School DxD, like, from the get-go, it's sort of very, like it takes the piss like it literally does even in, in, in further volumes it just kind of takes the mickey out of every single religion that you can ever think of so um i would say that like with testament of new sister devil it's just like yeah edgy um adventures main character is a chad and you know high harem hijinks abound you know it's less controversial in, until like later volumes when it you know amps up the edgy and stuff but you know yeah it is what it is do you think it's also basically because um like, so Sister New De Devil has, um, I'm just taking a quick look at the light novel database. It's only got like 14 volumes, whereas I think High School D DXD is like way more than that, isn't it? Like it's in yeah, the it's, yeah. it's just got 25 and then it's doing like a, it's doing like a slight name change for the last few volumes to uh, true High School DXD. I'm not sure how many volumes it's going to be, but it can't be more than like five. I think I think true high school DxD is where Issei um, um, from he him instead of being the Virgin Red Dragon Emperor he becomes the Chad Red Dragon Emperor. <laughs> Probably. Well, and I mean, then it's also got like I'm just taking a look like it's got like high school DxD DX, which I'm guessing is like a spinoff type volume or. It's basically it's basically telling you what is kids because his kids are overpowered as fuck. Oh, okay, so it's like a sequel series then. Sort of. It's just like a side story. So, Tom, how about you uh, tell us what you think? Okay, so first of all, I completely agree with what BioGundam previously said. However, my picks aren't the exact same because I knew that he would choose those. Um, the one that I want and I don't think is going to get licensed is And You Thought There Is Never A Girl Online. And the one that I think is probably going to get licensed is Zaragoto Book 3, Hanging High School, The Nonsense User's Pupil. Okay. So, tell us about the first one, and you never thought there was a girl online. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that uh, one. Just call it the chick of big tits who wants to kill all the normies and ride Russian stick. <laughs> wow! Basically. Basically. Like, bro. Uh, so and he thought there's never a girl online. Its plot is teenager Hideki Nishimura plays a massively multiplayer online role playing game called Legendary Age. But one day, he proposes online to a girl who tells him she is really a man. So he swears off online marriages. Two years later, he has been involved with a guild and eventually accepts an in-game marriage offer from his persistent guildmate Akko. When the guild has their first ever real life meeting, Hideki is shocked to f discover that his teammates are all not only girl gamers, but they all attend his school. The story follows their adventures as they form a school club to play the game while Hideki tries to help Akko, who is infatuated with Hideki as his game character, 
try to separate fantasy from reality. All right. And why do you think it will not get licensed? I think it won't get licensed because it hasn't gotten licensed up to this point and the anime is decently old, so any hype surrounding it is kind of died down. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, it does do well, in well, at least relatively well, in the rankings, and yeah. it does sell quite a bit with each new volume. I actually own three volumes of it in Japanese. They are all right next to me. Um... I like the art in the series, I like the character designs, and I also like this slice-of-life element to it. And I think the covers are all, like, really colorful and pretty to look at. And, so and just a little like... bit suggestive? Well, yeah. <laughs> but Kill I all also... the normies! Die, normies. Uh... <laughs> I just want this series to get licensed because we're kind of low on that slice of life thing, but this also kind of ties over to the popular uh, game type of light novel that is absolutely very popular over here in the States, and I feel like it's almost a perfect fit for the kind of book that we need. However, like I said, it got an anime a while ago. Uh, and there's no hype surrounding it anymore. <laughs> hmm. Who's the um? Who's the publisher on that? That is Dengeki Bunko. Okay, all right. So I mean, if it now, I don't if, think if they wanted to, a publisher like Seven Seas or Yen Press could license it. Yeah, but I don't think they will. Yeah, I was gonna say it's Yen Press that primarily has the relationship with Dengeki, right? Like, like yeah. I, you Seven Seas, I, you're right, has taken some, but. Um, Yen, I would, I, cause, cause funny enough, I mean, I, I was, well, okay. I'll leave mine for in a minute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. And then, well, I, yeah, you know, I, I, you picked Zari Goto, like I, you know, dude, <laughs> well, Zari Goto is my favorite novel series of all time. So I needed to pick it cause I seriously think it's going to get licensed. Well, I was going to say if there was ever like a sure bet title, I think. Like, if we do not hear the words from Vertical, oh, we've licensed volume three of Zarigoto this weekend, or, I will or, be at, or at least, at least this year, or like at least on an Amazon listing, because I actually noticed the Amazon listing for Strangulation before they announced it. Yeah. And they, they do that a lot, where they will list things before they announce it. Like, I'm not sure if they've even announced Koi Monogatari. But it's already scheduled on Amazon for December of this year, which yeah, is awesome. Yeah, they. I think they have. Like, I mean, they've announced like, well, again, right? Like at this point, Monogatari is just a given. Like, yeah. Like, Basically, I don't think they even need to announce yeah. that anymore. Yeah, anything Nishio Ishin in the year 2018 is you should probably license that for vertical. Well, at this at this point, I mean, they basically have. I, I think the only reason that there's a doubt about Zarigoto is just because they only licensed the two that Del Rey put out, right? And that they use the Del yeah. Rey translation as a basis. Yeah, they need to either hire the old translator again, or they'd have to get an entirely new translator. Yeah. Well, I mean, that doesn't hurt my feelings too much. I mean, uh, I like Zarigoto, I thought was well done. But, yeah. I mean, the Monogatari series have been really well done in terms of their translation, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I know there was, yeah. like, a little bit of foo-for-a about, what was it, Dang Nagbit or whatever? That, <laughs> But I, but given, like, how text-heavy the Monogatari series is, I think they've done a really fantastic job on those ones. So, even if they didn't get the original guy for the Zari Goto series, I don't really care. I'm pretty sure they'll do a good job regardless. Yeah, here's the thing. Before they even announced uh, that they were reprinting Zari Goto, I was actually doing the exact same thing Vertical was doing with Zari Goto. I was going through each volume that I owned and fixing it. <laughs> was it that bad? Like, I don't, I don't never look that It bad. wasn't bad, but when I was reading it, uh, the way that it was laid out, was a lot more straight from Japanese to English. Like, they kept every single honorific, and they had the uh, name order as a uh, family name given name instead mm. of uh, our Western name order. Right. And so 
I was like, maybe I could like fix that, but also straighten everything out. And plus the license for this is God knows where. So I was doing that. And then they announced it around my birthday, might I add. (laughs) <laughs> that was that was a really good that was a real good present i gotta say i was really excited uh and then we got Actually, it's these. funny thing you mentioned that because like one of the one of the volumes for high school dxd like released a day after my birthday so it was like hell yeah yeah it's, it's nice always a, it's always presents. nice when a when a light novel releases on your birthday i'm pretty sure that the boogie pop omnibus releases on my birthday by the way just straight up. <laughs> All right. Okay. Which is, is going, that... which, which is going to be lit. But uh, something that I want to point out about the third volume of Zaragoto that is going to that'll probably end up uh, as a real positive uh, if slash when Vertical goes for it. Yeah. This Zaragoto book in particular is by far the shortest. <laughs> well, you know what though, I didn't find the. Like, just even taking a look at, like, Decapitation and Strangulation, I didn't find them long. Like, they were engaging. I think, like, I got through yeah, them no I problem. Yeah, I, I thought they were, like, a little bit longer than usual, because they're around 350 or 3, like, 20 or something mm. around there. Uh, give me a second. I'll, I'll check the Japanese page length for those two. Well, uh, but, but I, I guess I'm just thinking, like, I'm just comparing it even to the size of like the Monogatari books, and they're really not that much longer than the Monogatari novels. If, if you look at the Bunko Bones of the Zargoto series stacked side by side, you will notice that the first two books are like around the same thickness as our copies of them. Yeah. The third one is like almost a pamphlet, and then the ones oh, after... Geez. One of them in particular is so big, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm kind of debating whether or not it's going to be longer than than an Ari Ferretta novel in print. Wow. It's that long. Huh. Well, well, I think you've got a pretty safe bet in terms of your license. I, I would be shocked if we don't hear about Volume 3 of Zari Goto this weekend. Because... If I recall, like, that's what they did, right? They announced, like, Zarigoto 1. Didn't they announce that at Axe? And then Zarigoto um, 2 was announced later in the year? Or it was, like, announced... They announced Zarigoto 2, to like, two months after 1 came out. Came out, yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, 2's been out now for several months. So, I'm thinking, like, Axe is a prime time. Either they're yeah. going to announce it, or the series is dead. That's my, that's my prediction on it. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna wait until the end of the year to think anything of that because True. I I want to stay a little more hopeful because, <laughs> like I said, this is my favorite novel series of all time. And yes, we do have fan translations, but I want that physical. Come on. Yeah. Oh no. I yeah. I, physical copies I are you. pretty good as well. Like if yeah. I had um, more bookshelf space, I'd probably like buy most of the light novels I have in my digital collection because I just love the feeling of the page and having it there to dec- decorate my bookshelf. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. Nothing beats a physical copy. All right. So, Terence, what about you? So my license predictions—they're probably both going to be wrong, but uh, <laughs> so I'll throw them out there. So. So one of the There's ones no problem with being wrong. Oh, absolutely. So one <laughs> one of the ones that I'm throwing out there is uh attacking the dungeon with my beautiful boss is overtime work. Now I actually read through this one. Uh, I used Google Translation just to get through it and just oh. see what it was about. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm yeah. so sorry for you. <laughs> yeah. I, I need to tell you the Terrence, Terrence, the... <laughs> Terrence, I need to tell you something. My Japanese teacher said that Google Translate is shit, and I tend to believe him. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, it is. Shavala, okay. Opa, no, I need to tell you, the the Google Translate translates uh, either Tojo's name or Tojo's dad's name as Raw oh. Dong Castle Blade. Oh, this is some <laughs> really bad. <laughs> Which really fits... <laughs> Testament of Sister New Devil. However, it's not the best for reading. 
I can't yes. even so, handle reading Google Translate for like a synopsis, yeah. let alone so, a whole so novel. Usually, you know what we it, should do for a lot yeah. of podcast? We should try and read like Google Translate of like, we'll, we should read sentences from a Google Translate of light <laughs> novels. That's a good idea, actually. All right. Anyway, Terrence, go ahead. Yeah. So sorry for interrupting you. So I so I went through this one with some Google translation. This was the one that I did. Um, and so it's uh, a story about like people in the real world. So it's a Japanese setting, um, but it does have a little bit of a fantasy twist. Um, so our main characters, they're office workers. Um, this is a uh, novel zero label novel. So it's um you know geared at 30 year olds um so oh, okay. these characters are 28 and 26 um anyways uh the boss it's a beautiful woman um she one day for some reason asks her co-worker can you help me fight in the dungeon um basically i think they wanted to do it as overtime work just to on their off day they wanted to get paid so they decide they're going to do this uh dungeon hunting and uh, so he's kind of the the one that's kind of teaching her what what to do. And she's the one kind of doing everything wrong <laughs> first time they go through. Um, now, is the dungeon like a legit dungeon or is this like so, a game they're playing? So what happened was 30 years ago in Japan, um, portals started popping up and the portals send them to a dungeon. And it oh, feels... Oh, wow, it's gate. Yeah, so <laughs> it feels... It feels very much. Why does Japan always have the fun shit happening? Like I want to. <laughs> they fight always monsters. get all the fucking portals. So so inside okay, the portal, on. yeah, inside the portal, it feels very much like Monster Hunter, where there's you know sort of monsters and things they can gather. For the most part, it's kill quests. So they okay. get in there and like one of the first quests they got to do, kill um you know six slimes and then collect their innards. And, you know, most of the monsters in the early going, they're pretty basic things. So we yeah. have things like blood wolves or slimes. Skeletons. Uh, no skeletons yet. But, yeah, a lot of animals, a lot of animal based hmm. stuff. No um, skeletons rip off. <laughs> That's so, like level 10, buddy. Get, <laughs> let, let that go. <laughs> okay, go so, ahead, Terrence. <laughs> so you won't see a whole lot of, um, you know, enemies. It's pretty much just like a if. If anything, it's kind of like almost a slice of slice of life times uh, isekai series. And it's not going to have like a overarching like enemy or anything. It's going to be a lot of sort of short segmented stories like they'll go okay. in, they'll hunt their boss, they'll get home and then they'll do another hunt the next day. No. Is each like do you think the like the volume that you checked out, is it mm -hmm. like um is the volume itself broken up into segments or is it just kind of one story? You're yeah. thinking that it'll be one story per volume. So there's, yeah, the, the volume one has like maybe, you know, four chapters. Um, so they're all segmented. There mm. is, there is one little overarching thing that kind of comes in halfway through the volume. I won't spoil it just in case yeah. we get it. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. And now, I mean, why do you think this one's not going to get licensed? Uh, just Other because, than the fact that none of us have heard of it. <laughs> yeah. So obviously it's got no anime. Um, it's a novel zero label novel. So uh, we I don't think we've gotten any of those stateside. If we were going to get it, I feel like it's it's Katakawa. You know, that's mm. that's the overarching company. So I think it would be only Yen Press, really. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, I, I don't think it has a great chance but if they're feeling like something new, it does have three volumes. So there's an OK chance, but not a great chance. <laughs> right. OK, so translation, it's shit and it will never get translated. We'll wow, bro. OK, so for your hey, one, you gotta that, be hopeful that this is all about hope. Sadly, I'm a <laughs> pessimist. So okay, well, lol. <laughs> if okay. Rumpel one and two, except three, have taught us anything, it's hope. And that's why I'm still slightly angry at three. <laughs> Okay, and it's so all, for it's your... all a troll. <laughs> okay, enough. Now, next one. <laughs> sure. So this one, this one has a chance just because it's Kodansha. I feel like J Novel Club or Soul Press, somebody like that could take a chance on this one. It is a right. newer, newer series. Um, this is the one that I kind of talked to you about last time. So it's 
I'm going to butcher the name. <laughs> yeah, that's around fine. around 40, a igu man, isekai ni tatsu, uh, megami power de jinsei ni dome no nari agari. So this one is um, also called Around 40 Years Old, The Salary Man Transfers to Another World, The Rising of Life for the Second Time with the Power of the Goddess. So it's an isekai tale. Um, what makes this one kind of interesting is that it's um, a whole family gets isekai'd. So their oh, right, yeah. Yeah, so their house actually is the target that gets transferred by accident. And since the house gets transferred, the house is basically the chosen brave, I guess. So the goddess, <laughs> the goddess of that world ends up giving all the powers and skills to the house. So things like even like auto translation skills that they would have gotten, it goes to the house. So it's not much <laughs> use. The house isn't going to be much use. It's got a high resistance and high defense, but it can't do anything. Anyways, yeah, right, so this god is this goddess retarded? <laughs> I, she did it by accident, so who knows? Could be Aqua. I don't know. I was gonna say she's Aqua level <laughs> goddess. <laughs> yeah, so, she's got all this power, but she's like incompetent as shit. That that's a great combination. I think it's really good in Konosuba that Aqua lost her powers. <laughs> hey, man! Spoilers, well, so she could, bro. Uh, it's she didn't bro, lose them completely. The world. Bro, stop it. I'm only on volume, like, I haven't read volume five yet. Bro. Anyway, okay. Um, <laughs> um, spoilers, make me blows up the world. Explosions, the end. Oh, jeez. That's going to be the how, that's, girl. that will be how it ends, eh? <laughs> it'll be, Probably. it'll end with Megumin being like, I'm done. I'm done with all of you. <laughs> Explosion! I'll be really angry if that yep. isn't how the Megumin side novels end. <laughs> well, I guess it depends on what timeline they're set in. If they're set after no, the main just, stories, as long as it doesn't end with Megumin exploding something. <laughs> All right. So for me, I cheated, um, and probably it's a good thing because we're already going longer than I thought we would. Um, I chose the same title for both my "I Want It" and my "I Think It'll Happen," and that is eighty-six. This yes. one, yes, this one basically is uh, set in an alt reality where these two states are at war with one another. One of the republics has a, um, well, I guess the empire has a series of drones that they use to attack this republic. And the republic, supposedly, as far as the news is concerned, created their own drones to counter the attack. But as it turns out, apparently the Republic's drones are manned and they are manned because this Republic is a racist uh, <laughs> Republic and they've basically rounded up anybody that doesn't fit their national yeah, identity and they've shoved them into these machines to fight for them. Uh, it, You know what? Um, there's only four volumes out so far, but... This one was um, in the uh, Kono light novel Gasugoi. Uh, it placed high on that. Uh, the fact that like its sales are really good for every new volume that's come out. It is a Dengeki Bunko. So, I mean, it again, it's, it's you know, right up the alley, like of Yenon picking it up. Uh, I, I think too, like this one represents like that one genre that we don't have a lot of like i guess saga of tanya the evil is the closest that we have which is you know that whole alt reality war type novel um i guess the combat baker and automaton waitress is kind of like that too mm. but it's hey, not hey, Justice, set during the war um is this based on like obama's drone strikes in the middle east oh wow i don't think so but the I, author did say that they well, came up with the idea yeah. from news of drone strikes. Yes. <laughs> Whether, oh, I got it right. Hell yeah. Well, I didn't say specifically it was Obama, though. <laughs> hmm. In any case, uh, yes, the author, yes, the author did uh, come up with that because of the news of drone usage and stuff like that. And then, yeah, so I, I mean... I didn't know a lot about it because initially I was reading it and it was like, oh, this is the non-existent 86th district that they're using to fight with these drones. I didn't realize there was that whole like racism aspect until Frog Coon was reading it online. And yeah, Frog Coon was, yeah, Frog Coon was talking about it like on Twitter and I, and 
the more it seems the, really good. Oh, like the more she talked about it, the more I was like, oh my god, like you know, I Justice's really want to check this out. Justice's sounds like some like amateur Nietzsche shit. This is like, yeah, chuck all the non ubermenches in the fucking drones. <laughs> chuck them in the drone. Um, although, although I must admit it was pretty funny. What was it? Uh, Frogkin was like, uh, wow, racism has gotten pretty bad when uh, the worst that your difference is is that you're a blonde kid. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, like, the Aryan race. <laughs> like it was just I don't know. I you know what? I just I think the concept sounds kind of cool. I I would like to see a light novel that, you know, like I like like you guys know that I love Overlord. Like I like that kind of grittier, heavier type book every now oh, and then. Oh, I love that too. It's yeah, fun like, and it, and it yeah. promotes my worldview. Well, like I mean, I I wouldn't read that stuff like 24/7 non-stop, but man, it yeah. is nice it's nice to have that to like sink your teeth into every now and then, you know, and, and I love and, gritty shit. Well, and we don't have any, we don't really have any Mecca like light novels. I mean, okay. Like in another world with my smartphone, like included that along with the kitchen sink, but I mean, whatever, it doesn't really count. Um, we've got like, but we, I mean, we don't really any, have any like actual really alt world warfare that is not involving like an isekai element, right? Like, and, and that's what I mean. Like Saga of Tanya, the evil's very close, but it's still involving that whole thing with the gods and the whole reincarnation. Yeah, isekai. isn't like Tanya the evil about like an, 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 an atheist that doesn't believe in God, so God just gives him all these powers? Well, basically God decides to teach him a lesson. Yeah. By making him other powers. God gets fuck. really freaking angry at the main character and then strands them. Yeah, like basically the whole thing is is that it's because... It's because he dies and faces God and God is like already pissed apparently at everything that's going on. And basically the guy's like, well, what do you want from me? He's like, there's no magic in my world. So like, it's not like I see God like powers happening all the time. So God's like, fine, you're going to go to a world with magic. And he's like, mm. and you know, there's no, I haven't grown up in wars, So it's not like there's that. Okay, well, fine. Check and check a world with war and a world with magic. Here you go, bitch. You're going to go. And that's what he does. <laughs> and, and becomes a fucking Aryan Nazi yeah. Chucky doll. Well, yeah. And and you know what? I mean, I, I still have to read volume two. I thought volume one was really good, but I mean, it's definitely not the kind of book for everybody. I think 86 yeah. is, I think 86 will be a maybe little better pace for that kind yeah. of story. Uh, just based on what I have heard. But again, I don't know. Cause it's not available in English yet. And I mean, it's only got yeah. four volumes like, I think it's one of those series that I could see uh, a company like Yen uh, jumping on board now because it's popular. A lot of people in the community are talking about it because of, you know, Kano Light Novel Gosugoi and, you know, like I said, Frog's talking about it on Twitter and stuff. And I think this one's going to get an anime, I would predict, probably with like when Volume 6 comes out. Because it yeah. always seems to be around six books. Like once mm -hmm. the series has about six books, they do an anime. Have you guys noticed that? Like it just seems to be kind of like six is about the magic it's like number. A it's it's usually what I've uh, what I've noticed is uh, yeah around six, but I judge it more around the span of time since volume one. Uh, I say usually an anime happens for a work after around two years after it has started. Mm, mm. Well, it, well, you know what? This started in February of 2017. So yep. you figure another two volumes will probably take it into 2019 because they come out about, you know, like every five, six months. Right. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, that would be because the last volume just came out in May. So, yeah, about another five months, another five months. Boom. We're into that 2019. Like I said, about six books. Book's been out for two years, especially I think if it hits Kono Light Novel Gasugoi again this year, I think Which it's I a, think for it sure. Will. Yeah, I think for sure it's gonna get there. I think for sure. Yeah, so that's that's my I want it, and I honestly think it's got a good shot at getting picked up. Whether it gets picked up at Axe or whether it gets picked up maybe a little later in the year, I don't know, but I definitely think this is a series that we're going to get. Yeah, that, yeah. that or Al Alduramine, those are two war series mm. I'd like to get. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd also like I'd also I, I like think we need Alduramine. from Dark War series as well, because we, we don't have enough of that. Mm. 
Well, and, and you know what? Exactly. Like, this is the thing. Like, I keep trying to think of these, like, for me, I mean, it's not even specifically series all the time that I'm like, oh, I really, really want this book in particular. I'm just kind of like, what is a genre that we don't have a lot of? And what are the books? Or drama, that... space yeah. opera. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Mecca. Like, and me- oh my God, we have like zero mecca. mecca. <laughs> yeah. Like we have no mecca. And like I said, I mean, you know, you get mecha thrown in as like a side thing, as a joke or whatever. But I mean, oh yeah, we don't... we've got giant robots. Nothing important, you know. Who cares? Get in the drone. <laughs> well, I mean, again, but it's not like, but you don't have, you know, you certainly don't have giant robots, man. You don't have mecha. You don't have that kind of thing where that's a focus. And except in I infinite think... Stratos. <laughs> they're not mecha they're just fucking body suits dude that's not mecha that's like <laughs> body suits with a couple of pieces of armor strapped on so it's not just total how like the, how the fuck are those things like fucking protect you they don't even uh, they, they don't even, they, they have a sh- the best part they have a shield they have like they, a can force break field <laughs> john's funny i just kind of view them as like fucking like gimp outfits with weapons that's basically what i view them as but they are you're not wrong that's the funny part about it though that's why <laughs> infinite stratos is okay in my opinion <laughs> yeah it's infinite straddling and infinite riding oh. <laughs> well you know uh, yeah Get that's, thrusters. that'll be a whole that'll be a whole episode in and of itself where we can bash <laughs> is for like two hours long because okay oh, but just so as I you're paying for you're paying for my hospital bills because uh, i'm going to be drinking a lot <laughs> well i'm not sure i can stand that much infinite stratosing i might oh. have to not be a part of that episode come on we can join like, in i'll be come drunk on. while i'm reading it i'll be drunk while i'm doing the podcast <laughs> we can have a huge I'll, I'll battle about us we can have a huge battle about who's best girl come on <laughs> maybe I don't like French people, but the French girl is best girl. I'm sorry. The witch girl? The French no, the girl? French, yes, yes, she's best. I agree. She's okay, a, see? Yeah. We don't even have to fight. Podcast is decided. I Char- might have to fight. Char- Charles is best girl. I'm not sure yet, but I might <laughs> fight. Charlotte is best girl. Um, in any case, whatever. It's fine. That's a whole other podcast. Okay. So we will end part one there because, like I said, we still have uh, other people to talk to in the next half uh, to find out their picks. And uh, then again, like I said, guys, we'll, uh, we're will we going to hammer out exactly how we're going to discuss the plethora of, uh, maybe I'm being too optimistic, but I mean, when I already know that J Novel Club alone is going to announce like nine titles. Oh, yes. They, have le- they, they said uh, that there are 12. Steiner said there are twelve, like, and two of the two of them are going to be announced before AX. Yeah, so 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 two before AX, ten at AX. So yeah. twelve by the time we get this posted up, uh, you know, this will probably go live Wednesday. Um, so sometime between, like, this is Monday for you that are listening. Um, so twelve by this weekend alone are going to be J Novel Club. Last year, nine announcements came out of Axe, and none of those were J-Novel. So, I mean, that could potentially mean that we have 21 light novel licenses if they Mm. keep even just the same number that they had last year. And I honestly think that Yen is going to announce more, and I think Vertical will probably be about the same. Like, I think... Jesus, it's going to be quite a busy year. Oh, like, just even... Like, even just trying to keep up with the new number ones, you know what I mean? Like, I've been trying to do that on my channel right now, and even that I'm having a hard time with. Like, I think I still have three that I haven't reviewed yet, and there's still more coming out this month in, like, another week. So Yeah, it's June, and I've hardly dented I've been killing slimes for 300 years. Oh, dude, I loved that book, man. That book was like I such know. a. It, it was so. The cover and, looks very. The cute. cover, the cover's so good. Oh, dude, the cover, it's like the comfy. Exactly, the artwork in it. I love the art in that book. It's so good. Uh the art is so good. The story is just like, ah, uh, I just feel so like the world sucks, but this world is wonderful. I want to <laughs> spend forever with it. I want to move into oh, her cottage and live with her. See, like I want to move in her the cottage world does with suck. her. Like, seriously, honestly, man, I, I loved that book. I was like, yeah, like I said, maybe it was, maybe it was Hyper the timing. Volume two. Oh man. I'll, yeah. I hope, I hope somebody licenses Majo no Tabi Tabi. 
I know that we already talked about what we hope gets licensed, but just as a general statement, I hope somebody licenses Majo no Tabi Tabi because it's decently close to I've been killing slimes for 300 years from what I've heard. Well, uh, uh, you know what? The covers alone are cute enough that I would like to have it on my shelf. I'd put them both together. <laughs> yes. Like, they have to be side by side. Like, that's just a given. Cute oh, yes. witch girls on both covers? Come on. It's gotta be, they gotta be side by side. That's just a given. I'd clap if it wouldn't destroy my mic. <laughs> I appreciate that, because editing that out would be very painful. Should we wrap this up? Yeah, we will be wrapped. We're, we're wrapping it up. It's all good. <laughs> Gundam's um, like yeah, I've uh, I'm Bio Gundam. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm Bio Gundam. Thank you for um, listening to my cynical and nihilistic ramblings and tinfoil hat theories. It was great to um, it was great to do this podcast again, and I will see you guys later. So I'm just going to stop my recording. <laughs> okay, and Bio Gundam is <laughs> checked out. Bye, Bio. Okay, well, Bio has case... silenced himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all good. Like I said, we uh, we should wrap it up because yeah, I do have a. Uh couple more people to talk to tomorrow night and uh someday we'll get this podcast that it's not every episode is two hours long but uh, i don't know when that day will come i think we're all looking forward to seeing what holds at axe this weekend and uh just a little reminder again uh we will be back next week to go over all of those things and if you're a listener hold on for like five seconds and i'll be back with more and if you're also a listener uh go on twitter and follow at mature purple just had to get that one last chill in Wow, man. Seriously, dude. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you guys later. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second half of our special pre-anime expo light novel uh, podcast. Tonight, it is myself and John luke and Kyle. Uh, Flies was hoping to join us, but he just moved across the country and has no equipment to record with us tonight. However, he did send his picks along, so uh, we'll be covering those. And uh, funny enough, about two hours after we finished recording last night, J Novel Club announced their first license, uh, their pre-axe announcements. They said there would be two of them. We now have the first one, and that is Lazy Dungeon Master. Uh, this one they describe as, come on, kill all those bandits for me already. No thanks, I don't want to do any work. My name is Kema Masuda, and my hobby is spending each day doing exactly nothing. But one fateful night, I was summoned to another world, where I met a blonde young girl who I named Rokuko. It seemed that fortune had favored me, and I would soon be living a wonderful life free of work. But even though I'm a guy who loves sleeping more than eating, Rokuko demanded that I help her save my dungeon. By the way, since you're the dungeon master, you'll die too if the dungeon core is destroyed. The dungeon only had one room, and it was already surrounded by bandits. Seriously? It's a checkmate already? I've got to break out of this impossible situation so I can stop working and just sleep. And and that's their synopsis so far. They have it tagged as fantasy, harem, isekai, like duh, uh, comedy, OP power, and moe. And of course, if you've seen the cover for it, you understand the moe part of it. Um, I, I took a quick look at it. There's seven volumes in Japan. It's still ongoing. The most recent volume just came out in March of 2018. And not all that surprisingly, given that it's a J-Novel Club, it is published by Overlap. Which, if you're familiar with J-Novel Club, they have had a long-standing relationship with Overlap. So, uh, clearly this is not one of their titles that's from a new publisher, which I think they said at least one or two of their announcements are going to be from someone new, right? Did you guys hear anything about that? Maybe I'm just making it up. Nope. Okay. Maybe I'm just. Yeah, I was up. uncertain on that point. Oh, okay. Um, the ch it's funny though. They called it so. They call it Lazy Dungeon Master, and and I kind of chuckled to myself because when I looked at the actual Japanese title, I was like, I, I think it's more like Lazy Titler for the English version, because the Japanese title is like. Zatai ni Hataraki Takunai Dungeon Master Ganamin wo Masubaru Made. <laughs> or translates as, I absolutely don't want to work as a dungeon master until I indulge in my laziness. 
<laughs> yeah, I think yeah. they uh, might have took some liberties there. Right? <laughs> I mean, I don't blame them. Honestly, Lazy Dungeon Master is a lot easier for me to say during my reviews and stuff. I, it doesn't bother me, but... <laughs> I just, I thought that was pretty funny. I'm like, wow, we are really taking liberties with renaming some of this stuff in English now. <laughs> I I don't know if there's some Sometimes it's like... for the better. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. sometimes. <laughs> but uh, so apparently uh, they've already posted part one on their website. So uh, it, now I don't know if it's free for everybody to check out or if it's only for their subscribers. Maybe I should have looked at that before I started talking about that. But uh, apparently yeah. the anime uh, news network uh, that I was looking at, the article on there says is that they're already looking to have volume one released around late June, late July. Wow. Yeah. The right. Turnaround's getting really fast. fast. Right. Like it's crazy. Like, you know, this is the thing. Like I'm, I'm just looking at it. I'm like, man, how can they get away with, they just move so fast. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, it looks like part one you can read um, if for free if you are even not a member. It looks like the fall, the later parts will be uh, only available to members. Hmm. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. I'm not logged into my account, but it's still letting me read it. So there you go. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to check out at least the first part of that, you can do so on their website right now. Uh, I, you know what, I, I kind of was, the other thing that made me chuckle about this is because, uh, Soul Press, we talked a little bit about them. They're like this brand new company that, uh, just launched. And I guess, what was it? April or something like that. And I just reviewed one of their titles called Strongest Gamer. And it was a isekai about a guy who's put in charge of, well, they call it a labyrinth in their book, but I mean, essentially it's, it sounds like it's going to be like a dungeon, like the same idea. And mm -hmm. I kind of thought it was funny because there's been such a large number of light novels in Japan having to do with people managing dungeons. And I thought it's a subgenre. I've said a number of times, it's a subgenre that we really haven't had. And all of a sudden here it is. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, and one next guy year you'll be bored with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, one guy gets the idea and everyone jumps on the bandwagon. Well, yeah. I, you know what though? I mean, it's, Again, it's it's just another take on the whole isekai genre, right? It's just a subgenre of the whole isekai movement, which I, I mean, apparently still is doing phenomenally well. Uh, I I actually talked to the guys at Soul Press, and they were telling me that Strongest Gamer is substantially selling better than their pure fantasy title, Battle Divas, which I, I thought why. was kind of well. I, again, right? Like, this is what I kind of wondered too, because I'm looking at the covers and I'm like, now is it because the co cover girl on Strongest Gamer looks kind of like a cute lolly furry, or is it because, <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, I would have thought the really, you know, hot redhead on Battle Divas would have been more appealing to people, but, uh, well, I don't know. I, I kind of, like I said, I, you know what, as much as some of us, complain about how much isekai there is it is still a really really popular genre like sam has said times and time again with j novel club that uh isekai no matter how much people gripe and say there's too much of it it always sells the best and it's always isekai titles that top their requests so well well in yeah. a sense it's the perfect escapism oh there's an absolutely a great reason about why it's popular i agree um i i guess I guess the thing is, is that, well, I mean, I'm in kind of a different situation, obviously, than the quote unquote average light novel reader, I guess. I guess I just, because I read at least one volume as much as I can from every series. Maybe that's why I'm kind of like sitting here going, please just bring out something like different, some new, <laughs> like maybe that's why when I read something like, you know, Monogatari or even like, even uh, even a sister's all you need almost felt like a little bit of a break. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Like, right? Right? I know. I know. I Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> although, actually, the Dark Maidens was a really good break. And, and I mean, and it was, there wasn't anything really sketchy like, you know, little sisters feeding their brothers panties and stuff in that one, at least. <laughs> I hope not. 
Thank God. Oh my goodness. Well, it would have been a very, very different book. <laughs> <laughs> um, alrighty. So, uh, continuing on with our theme from last night slash first half. It's always weird for me to like do this and then think eventually this will be one long running thing. So we're talking, of course, about our picks for Anime Expo, the title we would like to see licensed and then the title that we think will get licensed. Now, even though Flies isn't with us tonight, he did send his picks along. Uh, I'll cover those, but uh, you know what? How about uh, Jean-Luc, you go ahead and let us know about your titles, what they're about, why you think one will not get licensed, and why do you think the other one will? The one thing that I desperately want them to license is Gate, and thus the GSDF fought there. Well, it's a light novel by um, Yanai Takumi, which was uh, first published, I think, in 2000, came out in 2006, then as a web novel, I think, and a little bit later, uh, they published like five novels that were reprinted as 10 light novels. There's five novel guidance that also were reprinted as a uh, 10 light novel. Well, basically, the story is uh, that one day in uh, modern day Ginza, uh, inside Tokyo, you have a portal from another, another world that suddenly appears and a legion of Roman like soldiers just storms out of there to attack the city. So, using more advanced weaponry and tactic, like the Japanese self-defense force easily repels the enemy and passes through the gate to establish a forward operating base and initiate peace negotiation with the empire of the other world. So from there, you have a lot of political thing going on, a lot of the country of Earth, uh, well, they're not super happy that Japanese keep all of the information they get from another world to themselves. So there's some political intrigues over here, but mainly it focuses uh, 33 years old Itami Yoji, which is a Japanese soldier. So he's sent to investigate uh, the other world where there's magic, dragon, elves, all sorts of fantasy elements. So he's using his otaku knowledge as well as his... Uh, soldier uh, knowledge to like find his way uh, in that new environment. It was um, adapted as a manga, which I saw this afternoon that uh, is supposed to come out in English. There's a Sekai project that normally uh, translate visual novel. So I think they, um, I saw the they did the translation for it. It's supposed to come out like uh, this summer. Oh, really? I didn't know anything about that. Well, I didn't either. I just looked it up this afternoon and it uh, seems like it will be happening. So, um, and after that, we also have an anime adaptation that came out in 2015 and is also um, available on Crunchyroll. So, reason why I want this one is mainly because of the world building. Also, uh, in the anime, you had like this, uh, the representation of the, the empire was more European based, as opposed to um, in the novel and manga, it's supposed to be a Roman empire. So, you have a lot of reference to, uh, well, Roman culture. Uh, Roman history, so all these things I find it really interesting. Also, the the characters I like the characters. It's a fun fantasy, uh, well, isekai story. So that's basically why I, I want it to be uh, licensed, and why I think it won't be licensed. Well, mainly uh, because I think no English company has deals with. Uh, I think it's uh, uh, Alphapolis, which uh, yeah, Alphapolis, which is a publisher in uh, J uh, in Japan. So they don't have any deals at the moment with uh, with them, and also um, because of the recent controversy with um, 
uh, New Life Plus. I don't think that uh, we'll get any uh, light novel based on uh, Japanese army uh, at the moment. Yeah, we had a lengthy discussion about the whole New Life Plus thing last the other night. Last night, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with your analysis on that in terms of why we probably won't get it right now. Although, I mean, the fact that it's already had an anime and it has been out for some time maybe means at least it kind of got under the radar, but again. Yeah, but if the the manga comes out in English, there might be a chance. So I'm hoping for next year. Yeah. Well, you never know. Yeah. All right. So what's your one you think will get picked up? Uh, this one, I came up uh, with it uh, by accident, like I was looking through um like um novel in japanese um like trying to see what would be a good um a good pick for uh, english companies and i uh came up with uh, a one shot it's called moshi koko yakyu no joshi maneja ga dlaka no management o yondara or moshi dola for short or if you prefer the english title uh, what if a female manager of a high school baseball team read Rockers management? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it sounds funny, but actually it's really, well, for me that um, I studied in uh, business management, so it kind of um, uh, spoke to me, but uh, yeah. also it's not far-fetched. Like uh, the synopsis is... The story follows Minami Kawashima, who, as a favor to her childhood friend Yuki Miyata, takes over as manager for the Odokubo High School baseball team when Yuki is hospitalized with an illness. With no previous experience managing a team, Minami ends up picking up a copy of Peter Drucker's business management book. Uh, management, task, responsibility, practice, and to start to manage the baseball team like uh, one would manage a business with the goal of reaching the nationals. So it's not that far-fetched. Like, no. basically, Drucker's philosophy, uh, like he's a business thinker of the mid-1900s, uh, so basically his philosophy is... Well, it's, uh, he thought that uh, business was more efficient if it was uh, decentralized and uh, simplified. So he also up for outsourcing and uh, a great respect for the worker, like employees are assets and not liabilities. So basically, it's all things that can be well used pretty much in any organization. Right. So, hmm. uh, and why I think it will... Uh, most probably be uh, picked up. Well, lately, J Novel Club, like, well, they uh, published a few uh, one shot, including uh, Anioni with uh, Aoni, uh, which uh, already had uh, like a manga, TV series, stuff like that uh, published in the past. Like this one, also, there was a um, manga. Uh, a 10 episode uh, anime series and a live action uh, movie all in uh, 2011 oh really okay hmm. and um, also the well this one shot uh, on its first year uh, it uh, sold 1.8 million copies wow and the hmm. thing I didn't know is that uh, well Peter Drucker's is really like famous in Japan. Like the, a lot of manager read his book. So, huh. so it's like, Oh, okay. Now here, I'm just going to ask you this then. Do you think that a sports slash business focused light novel is really going to break into the current English market? I mean, I, I think you're right. Like in terms of it being a one shot and like you said, all the sales numbers and everything else are right there behind it. But do you, what do you think? Like, is it going to kind of break through and, and get us that sort of more real life? Well, it's a slice thing? of life. 
like you yourself in, in all your recent video and i think in the last uh podcast we talked about it uh, also like there is a need for more slice of life and there you Absolutely. go it's a low no it's I a agree. low commitment uh since it's a one shot yeah it's yeah. not a 20 plus book series that uh like you don't know when it's going to end right who's the publisher for it uh it's uh diamond incorporate hmm. i'm not familiar with them yeah i think it's the the only uh like it, it's branded as a novel but it has like uh, the manga look on the cover but uh, i think it's the only light novel-ish thing they published hmm well you know what i mean even if like even if say a company like j novel club didn't pick it up uh i have noticed like last year vertical picked up a number of sort of one shots like they picked up that uh one novel what was it like uh the one where it was like about the ladies and uh the anime company anime supremacy that's it i just had to find it on my shelf uh and it was a one shot and it was like a slice of life, but it was focused on three women and working in the anime industry. So I, you know what? I think you're, I, I like, I don't know specifically about this title. I mean, why not? Like you said, I mean, 1.8 million copies sold in its year of release. You can't argue with that. Plus a translation you said into like manga. Was there an end in an anime and a live action movie? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, you know what? I, I think like I was going to say, even if not specifically this title, I think you might be onto something in terms of like the kind of thing that companies in English are maybe going to start looking at is, like you said, low commitment, but, you know, slightly different genres that you kind of kind of introduce to the market and test it out and say, hey, you know, is something like this that's more real and more not even just slice of life, like the way that we describe anime, where there's usually a little bit of outlandish comedy, but like slice of life, like literally more like a real life thing. I could definitely see them picking something like that up just to even test the market. And also I'm pretty sure in the 12 well, license that the Geneva Club is uh, teasing, pretty sure there's uh, at least one or two uh, one shot in there. Yeah, I, yes, I did read that too, where, uh, Sam said not all of them. Well, I don't think the last thing I read and it wasn't an official confirmation, but he basically said, who said that all of these are series. <laughs> so I, I think he, he very heavily implied the one thing I saw, he heavily implied that you're right. Some of them are perhaps like one shots or they're very, very short. So, um, maybe you saw, did you, did he say something any more definitive than that? Did you see that or? No, I didn't uh, follow up uh, as close as you and Terrence uh, are. Okay. All right, cool. All right, Kyle, what are your picks? Well, I think I'll go with, uh, the one that I think we'll get, which is more along the lines of the one I know we will get is, um, okay. Uh, gifting this wonderful world with explosions. It's the spin-off series to uh, Konosuba that we have now uh, featuring uh, Mega Man. And this is quasi prequel to uh, the main series. So it happens while Mega Man is still in the Crims uh, Crimson Demon Village. And just her training up and um, being educated to become an adventurer. Okay. Yeah, and so we got the main series, which is, uh, you know, moving along just great. And, uh, you know, we got ATX. It might not be announced there. And also, uh, it's being published by uh, Yen, Yen On, Yen Press. Yeah. Yeah, it's Yen On. That's printing the uh, the main series, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Yen On. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, if they've announced anything that, what they're, if planning to make announcements but it's we just got volume four released in english and that's the one that centers around the Crim crimson uh demon village and so the spinoff series was uh published in japan uh pretty much uh around the same time that volume four was released in japan so i can't mm. yeah i can't remember if it was right before or right after but they were uh close to each other right Okay. 
So that's the one you think that like is a sure bet we're going to get licensed. Oh yeah, that's definitely going to happen event, you know, hopefully in the near future so I could be proven right. But it's definitely <laughs> something that we'll see here. No, I think you're absolutely right on that. I think you're right on the money on that. I mean, well, Yen's already shown that, right? They've licensed uh the ReZero EX books, they mm-hmm. licensed the Spice and Wolf sequel, uh Wolf and Parchment. Uh, they've licensed Gun Gale Online from Sword Art Online, the spinoff, Sword Oratoria. Like, they've licensed pretty much all the spinoffs that have at least, you know, a substantial number of volumes. Especially at the point where, like you said, I mean, with that spinoff starting at about the point where we're already caught up with in English, it would make sense for them to start bringing that out. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> So what's the thing? What what now? Now your second pick, you said what? Did you you think it will get licensed, but you think it's a little less likely than Megumin's story? Well, I'm it's I'm hoping. Uh, I don't have any okay. definitive proof, and right. yeah, the reason why I'm less inclined to believe it'll be a license is because it's another isekai, and um. This one is uh, Tensei Shitarken Den Shita, uh, which translates to, in English, I was a sword when I was reincarnated. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so this one is, it's narrated by uh, some average guy who died and then got reincarnated as a sword. And so he still has his uh, wits about him. He has certain magical powers so where he can uh move and act on his own right but you know as it's going through the opening chapters of his story he comes to find out that you know there's not much he could really do on his own and he kind of gets stuck and can't move at all and so what the story really focuses on is uh this cat girl slave who happens to find him in the middle of a forest and so they're you know once she picks him up they uh form a bond she starts using him and it's really the story of the both of them going forward Hmm. all right uh you know what i am certainly in a place where i agree with you that it is totally possible we're going to get that one I think, actually, I would say I would not have blamed you if you had picked that as the one that you thought for sure would get licensed. Well, it's just that the isekai market is just so flooded at the moment that it, I almost think that they're just picking some of this stuff out of a hat of what they want to get published. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just taking a quick look here because, I mean, you know, you now that you mentioned the title... Uh, this one is published by the same company that did, uh, I, that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Yeah. So that one has been picked up by Yen On. Yeah. So Yen On does have a relationship with this publisher. Yeah. So I think it's a good chance, but you know, like I said before, it's really up in the air because it's, it's almost like what strategy do they want to go for? It's like, do they want to go for the stuff that's good or they want to go for the stuff that's like way out there. And then you're going to get, you know, just a bunch of people picking up the volume number ones just to see, you know, how could a vending machine be interesting in another world? It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, like, honestly, I, I mean, I agree with you. Like definitely. Uh, I mean, last year was when we got like, I was reincarnated as a slime. I was reincarnated as a spider. I was reincarnated as a vending machine. I, I agree with you. Uh, you know, it it really did seem, particularly last year, we were just sitting there going, scratching our heads and thinking, <laughs> why are you licensing all these weird honking stories? Like, that just makes no sense. But yet, you know, they're doing an anime based on that time I got reincarnated as a slime. I haven't read volume two of I'm a spider. So what, but I just saw anime news networks review on it said that it's the volume is so good that it ranks as one of the best isekais out there. Like, I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. It's honestly a sword is not that far out to me. (laughs) Yeah. It's, you know, it's, we're all waiting on bated breath. 
Yeah, I, I, yeah, well, and you know what, this one, uh, cause I know actually I just, uh, what, like two weeks, two or three weeks ago, the most recent volume, well, when did it come out? Cause I've got the page open. Uh, it came out at the end of May and it was in the top 10 bestsellers of, in Japan mm-hmm. for that week. So, I mean, the book sells. Yeah. And the author, uh, Tanaka Yu also had another series, uh, that came out and that was also on the top 10. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, I'm gonna look because you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the new one. Oh, right. Yeah, the new one. Yeah, the Tamer. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. Hmm. Yeah. I. You know what? I. And I have actually heard from a number of people, uh, particularly commenting on like you know the top ten when I covered this title. A lot of people say it's actually really good. I mean, I haven't looked at it obviously, but. Uh, but it apparently a lot of people are saying that it sounds a lot better than and actually reads a lot better than what you might initially think. And I mean, personally, cute cat girl <laughs> wielding a big honking magical mm-hmm. badass sword like sounds like a winner to me. <laughs> yeah, we shall see. I'd license it. <laughs> I mean, I honestly it screams it screams anime adaptation to me. Yeah. I I kind of feel like it might not be far enough along for an anime adaptation just yet, but I agree, but I think it will be something we'll see in the future. As long as, you know, the fad doesn't crash and burn within the next couple of years. Right. Well, actually, you know, what's funny. Cause we were talking about this last night because, uh, my pick for what I thought a would get licensed and B what I wanted to get licensed was 86. Mm-hmm. And, we were talking last night and we were saying, I said, I think when 86 gets to six volumes, it'll, that's when the anime will happen. And I can't remember who it was, whether it was bio or Terrence or Tom. Anyway, they said it's almost, it's not even just number of volumes, but it's like a two year mark. If the series has survived at least two years Mm -hmm. is when you start seeing it get announced for anime. Right. And I'm yeah. looking at this book and it hits two years in July. At the end of July, it'll have been published for two years. So, and it's at volume five. So I think, I think, I think, you know what? In another six months, we might hear about this getting an anime. And if that's true, I think we'll get it licensed. Hmm. That's my take. <laughs> yeah, these uh, anime adaptations certainly do help uh, for picking up licenses for the original light novels. In English, at least. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I think, I mean, we, we've we talked, I think, a little bit about this. Uh, but obviously, licensing a light novel, translating a light novel is a way bigger investment than a manga series. And so, obviously, these companies want to pick titles that they figure either really plug into the market that they're doing well with or that has an anime to support it so that they figure the anime will boost the visibility of the title. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, you know what, who knows? I, it seems to me like Yen on, especially starting last year, I like, this is the thing I wish, I wish we could actually see sales numbers like what they do in Japan. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Like it drives me bonkers, but but it seems to me, and I mean, you know, you guys, whether you want to talk about it or not, but it seems to me like last year, Yen On all of a sudden like broke loose and just started licensing some stuff that everybody was really surprised about. Like we said, like these Isekai titles that they licensed. Um, to me, it started with Psycho May. That was the first title they licensed that all of us scratched our heads and were like, where did this come from? Hmm. But then last year, all of a sudden, it just seemed like suddenly they were licensing series that were not anime based, that were a little bit quirkier than, you know, the average. Um, And you know what? To their credit, uh, now granted, I haven't read volume two of uh, Slime or So I'm a Spider, So What? But uh, but to their credit, like Vending Machine, which probably was probably the wackiest out of all of them. And it was not the worst light novel I've ever read. Surprisingly. Oh, I thought for sure. Oh my God. I was, I was, I lived in fear of just what that was going to be. I really did. I thought, oh, I'm just going to suffer so horribly with this. But 
I I hate to say it. It was um, it was a lot better than I thought it would be. But I think too that that's it depends on the reader, right? Because yeah. again, for me, because I'm reading so many different titles, this one vending machine focused so much on that idea of resource management and trying to adapt items from our world to see which ones would be useful in the world that he now finds himself in that I actually found that interesting. Yeah. Cool. Not to mention just the way that they actually made a vending machine work in like a magic and <laughs> sorcery society. Yeah. It was just, okay. <laughs> I convert money into magical energy to keep me running. Cause there's no electricity. Okay. <laughs> I wonder how that elevator <laughs> pitch went. Uh, the uh, right. <laughs> it does kind of crack me up sometimes i'm like I, I just yeah i'm like you well did you read a sister's all you need or see the anime no i'm gonna start reading it tonight okay yeah i couldn't stomach the first half of the episode of <laughs> the sister's all you need so okay fair enough fair enough yeah i might try to pick it up but uh, i don't know the only thing the only thing that i will like the the, the book it trolls you with the really out there little naked sister thing at the very beginning, but uh, it, it is kind of a troll. But I will say that the one thing that I made me chuckle about it is because, of course, the main character is a light novelist, mm -hmm. but he's getting very out there with his whole like little sister stories. And when you were talking about the whole elevator pitch that happens numerous times in the book where he calls his editor and he's like, I've got this great idea. And he starts rambling it off. And the editor at first is like, okay, that sounds good. That sounds good. Are you an effing blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and he just freaks out on him. He's like, no. <laughs> and so I just kind of envisioning like, Hey, um, I'm a brand new author and I really think vending machines are cool. Uh, I think they'd be really cool in a fantasy world. <laughs> uh, I, there's some brave editor really was like, yep, okay. I, but again, I, I think this has to do with the whole thing that ja Japan really has that uh, that website, the whole So You Want to Be a Light Novelist website, mm -hmm. which allows for almost a test market for some of these crazier ideas. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. So it's... Yeah, it's not like it's just the editor making a random choice off the street kind of thing, but... Well, I guess we will briefly talk about Anime Flies, Flies' picks, for what he thinks will get licensed and what he would like to get licensed. Because uh, we promised him we would say so. Uh, <laughs> uh, so his pick for what he wants is Alderamin on the Sky. And now this one... Uh, and my anime list says, Ikta Solark is a carefree young man who only wants two things in life, a woman on his arm and a place to nap. Unfortunately, his peaceful life is destroyed when war breaks out between the Katvarna Empire and the neighboring Republic of Kyoka. Ikta and his childhood friend, Yatori Shino Iksem, join the army as military officers where they meet the infantryman Matthew Oh, these names. The sniper Torway <laughs> and the medic Haroma on a boat heading for the military exam site. However, after a rogue storm sinks their vessel, the five of them end up in enemy territory near a military outpost. There they discover that the heir to the Katvarnan throne, Princess Camille Kitora, I'm not even going to try it, has been taken hostage. The five are able to rescue her, and as a reward, each one of them is granted the title of Imperial Knight one of the highest honors a soldier can receive. It seems that Ikta will have to put his dream of tranquility on hold as he must now become the hero he never wanted to be. Uh, this one, of course, had an anime back in 2016. Uh, it is a alt-reality military war-type series, obviously, with involving magic and that kind of stuff. And Flies was basically saying he would like to get it because... He likes the fact that the main protagonist is intelligent and that uh, we could always use some more military series because really right now all we have is the saga of Tanya the Evil, I think is pretty much it. Yeah. Right? Can you guys think of any other one that I'm not thinking of? Tanya is pretty much the only one that uh, comes to mind. 
Yeah. Well, and I mean, that was my same argument that I wanted 86 was that that's a genre that we really have nothing of. And, and at least with 86 and with this one, you know, other, I mean, on the sky, it's not an isekai. It's actually characters that have grown up in that world, live in that world that are now embroiled and caught up in this conflict kind of thing, which, you know, is a little bit different, I think. So that is his thing that he would like to be licensed, although he doesn't think it will. Uh, mainly, I think, because the anime is already two years old almost, which, as we were saying, seems to decrease the likelihood of a license. In terms of the one that he thinks will get licensed, uh, that's uh, Hayuka. And part of the reason he thinks that it will get licensed is because it recently had a U.S. release for the anime, uh, including a new dub. Plus, apparently, I guess the author has started releasing novels in that series again. And it apparently is at the request of his older sister, student Hotaro Oreki joins Kamiyama High School's classic literature club to stop it from being abolished. Joined by fellow members Eero Chitanda, Satoshi Fukube, and Mayaka Ibarra. The story is set in Kamayama City, a fictional city in Gifu Prefecture that the author based on his real hometown of Takayama, also in Gifu. The fictional Kamayama High School is based upon the real life Hida High School. The club begins to solve various mysteries, both to help with their club and at Eru's requests. So, uh, one of those sort of uh, high school detective agency type titles, yeah? Um, I'd say it's almost more along the lines of uh, my high school romantic comedy snafu, or however we translated it, in that, <laughs> um, yeah, in that they almost go out looking for uh, trouble to solve. Oh, really? Oh, so it's not like people seek them out. Um, I think on occasions they do. I just briefly uh, remember that anime. Uh, mm. Yeah, it was... Yeah, they're mostly what they get their necks into. It's like they're really not supposed to be. But, you know, they, uh, Chitanda's whole thing is that she loves mysteries. She loves uh, solving them. And so she sees the main character as just this really intelligent guy who can, you know, look at people and uh, figure things out. So he's got like, well, what do you mean? Like he's got like an eye for people? Like he can, like he's got like just a good intuition that way or? Yeah. Yeah. He reminds me of, of a really, I guess, tame uh, Hachiman from uh, Snafu. So, oh, okay. you know, he's not antisocial, but he's more along the lines of a loner, kind of lazy, more or less just wants to be left alone. Okay. A bit detached mm -hmm. and... Okay. All right. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, all right. So it's not, okay. So it's not really what I'm thinking then. Cause I, cause when I was reading it, I thought like mysteries as in, you know, that it's almost like Scooby-Doo, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, obviously it's not Scooby-Doo, but you know, but you know what I mean, right? Like it's actually like a group of high school kids solving mysteries, whether they be like, I didn't know whether they were kind of outlandish mysteries or just like high school drama related mysteries. Yeah, but... more along the lines of the high school drama related mysteries. Hmm. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Hmm. Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, again, like, I think this is what we were talking about, right? Like, that sounds more slice of life ish than uh, than a lot of the stuff we have, and I definitely think that that's a genre we could do more with yeah yeah and it was animated by uh kyo annie so you know that's a plus all right so cool all right well okay so i mean at this point then we've got uh well just a couple days left it's tuesday by our time so i'm hoping to have this up on wednesday and then only two days later it's j novel club's panel on friday at Anime Expo. So that's going to give us, by then they'll have announced their second pre-Axe title. And then I think they have nine or 10 more that they're going to be announcing at Anime Expo. 
Oh uh, yeah, this is gonna be fun. Oh wow, yeah, it's gonna be painful for my wallet. <laughs> not to mention, like, not to mention. I mean, trying to just try and keep up, like, just trying to read all the, even just trying to read the volume ones that come out of Anime Expo. It's gonna be hard to do, especially if they're already pumping them out as of June, uh, July. You know, the end of July. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. So. In any case, uh, so we will end there. And then what we are going to do is we usually do the podcast every two weeks, but we are going to reconvene next week to go over the Anime Expo announcements. Uh, We are going to try and figure out how to do that in a way that the podcast will not last for 15 hours. (laughs) (laughs) like maybe we should just each take two titles and you've got two minutes go (laughs) uh just to talk about them and so that will be next week and then uh two weeks after that i think the goal is to talk about infinite dendrogram yep so for once we actually have our next two shows planned look at us that's good getting all getting we're getting there (laughs) right right we're 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 getting there <laughs> exactly all right so kyle and john luke thank you for joining me tonight mm-hmm. to all of you listeners listeners thank you for joining us and uh hopefully you will be just as excitedly watching the twitter feeds and all the rest of that kind of news and stuff coming out of anime expo this weekend so we will be back i said next week and that's what we're going to do to talk about all the new light novels that will be coming out Until then, thanks very much for listening, and we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye for now. For show notes and related links, visit lightnovelpodcast.com.